Good morning. This is Russ and Kitty Walden with Father's Heart Ministry. And this is the Morning Light Daily Bible Study, an expositional study of the Bible where we go through the scriptures chapter by chapter and seek to extract the narrative the message of the Bible in the context that God originally intended. Uh, this is in contrast to topical Bible study, which is more, much more common in Christian culture, where someone takes a subject and pulls verses from all over the Bible to support uh, the message that is being presented at that particular time. But when you go through the Bible verse by verse and chapter by chapter, you get messages that God has sewn like a thread into an entire book, into an entire passage. And you also do not give yourself the luxury of avoiding those passages that are difficult, challenging, perhaps contradictory to the way people popularly think. And in the writings of the Apostle Paul, you see him exhorting young Timothy and Titus and, and others and saying, give attention to reading. Uh, Lord knows we give attention to everything else when we come together, but unless you're in a part of a liturgical church, very seldom will you hear a scriptural reading being done. And that's what we endeavor to do, is just to read the scriptures and do like they did in Nehemiah and Ezra's day, to give the sense of that which is said. Now, today is Friday, and being Friday, we do something that we don't do the rest of the, the week, is we, first of all, want to thank our partners for standing with us, for supporting Father's Heart Ministry as we pursue these things that God has called us to do. And I want to encourage you to go to fathersheartministry.net and click on the donation link. And we have several ways that, that you can give. You can use PayPal, which is probably the most common way that people donate. But we also have an alternative to PayPal called Square that does not require you to have a a membership or an account with them, such as PayPal does. You could also call in and make your donation over the phone. Our office number, Terry Allen, is on hand during the broadcast right now. You could pick up your phone and dial 417-544-1298 and give your donation over the phone. Or you could mail your donation by sending your check or money order to Father's Heart Ministry, P.O. Box 1915, Branson, Missouri, 65615. And again, all of that information is found on at fathersheartministry.net, or you could go to propheticnow.com. It's the same site. And click on the donation link. There's something about the exchange that takes place. As you extract, and of course you wouldn't have listed this far, if you're not extracting something of spiritual value from the Bible study and from Father's Heart Ministry. And Paul said that it is ordained that those that preach the gospel should live of the gospel. And quite frankly, uh, when you give, this is not something, Father's Heart Ministry is not something we're doing as a religious sideline. Kitty and I both came out of the business world some years ago to devote ourselves full-time to this work, and now it's grown globally to the point that we have many employees that we uh, support through the finances that you are giving in to make all of this possible. And so when you give, our ministry is not so big that even the smallest gift makes a difference. And as Kitty says often in our meetings, when we take up an offering, she's very pragmatic about it. She says, when you give, that's our paycheck. And if you think that is a worthy endeavor, if that's a worthy thing, then go to the website and make the gift. What do you give? You give what the Lord tells you to give. You do, John 5.19, you do 
what the Father says to do. So, Father, we thank you for the for our partners. We thank you for those that love us enough to go to the trouble of giving, to go to the website and click on that donation link. Lord, you know what a difference it makes in what we do. And I just ask right now, Holy Spirit, that for every person listening, that you would speak to them and say, go to the website and give this amount today. Pick up the phone and give this amount today. That amount. Let the first witness be the one that they respond to. And not putting it off, not delaying, but just listening to the Holy Spirit. God, you're capable of speaking. These people that are listening to this broadcast are capable of hearing. Let them hear now and give them the provocation, Lord, to not only to hear, but to act. And we thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. And we thank you, our listeners, for your faithful giving. Today we are reading, it's a short chapter, we are reading in Isaiah chapter 25. Mystery Babylon Exposed. In this chapter, Isaiah looks down through contemporary history and he sees the ultimate captivity of the people in Babylon being brought to an end. Now, they haven't even been taken captive to Babylon yet. Now, Isaiah is saying that you're going to go captive to Babylon, but Babylon's going to be destroyed. True to Isaiah's prophecy, the city of Babylon ultimately does fall and will never be rebuilt, though Sodom Hussein worked secretly to do just that in opposition to God's word itself. And we're going to share some things with you about Sodom Hussein's birth and upbringing that you may not have realized to see just how opposed he was uh, to the things of God, and unnecessarily so because of people of God that were connected to his life that even spared his life before he was ever born. Likewise, we understand that mystery Babylon is a spirit that works in the earth, just as the spirit of Antichrist that John declared was working already in the earth 2,000 years ago. For us, Babylon touches our lives when we encounter opposition to the gospel and mockery of our faith. How many of you have been mocked because of your faith? How many of you have been persecuted? How many of you have been marginalized and mishandled and mistreated and disadvantaged because you're people of faith? Sometimes that can come through an unsaved spouse. Sometimes that can come through family members or next-door neighbors. Sometimes it even happens in the church or on the job. But because you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you're walking out that faith and you suffer because of it, that is the Antichrist spirit, that is Mystery Babylon, that's not just an ancient city uh, 59 miles outside of Baghdad, but it is a spiritual principle that the Bible tells us is at work in opposition to the things of God and opposition to the people of God. But the rejoicing of Isaiah in Isaiah 25 is that Babylon and the spirit of Antichrist will ultimately be defeated. Let's read the chapter. O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Your counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For you have made of a city, and he's talking about Babylon here, you are making of a city a heap, of a defense city a ruin. A palace of strangers shall be no city. It shall never be built. Therefore shall the strong people glorify you. The city of the terrible nations shall fear you. For you have been a strength to the poor and a strength to the needy in his distress. A refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat. When the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. You will bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place. Even the heat with the shadow of a cloud. The branch of the terrible ones will be brought low. In this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, of wines on the lees, and of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all the people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death 
in victory. And the Lord God shall wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him and he will, we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest. And Moab shall be trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill. And he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them, as he that swimmeth spreads forth his hands to swim. And he shall bring down their pride together with the spoils of their hands. And the fortress of the high fort of thy walls shall he bring down, lay low, and bring to the ground even to the dust. Chapter 25 of Isaiah is a mirror opposite of the previous chapter and an extension of its message. In chapter 24, the judgment of the godless is depicted as an emptying out of the land because of transgression. Judgment first comes to the house of God, but now the eye of Isaiah turns by the Spirit of God upon the oppressors of the people of God. Babylon, the oppressors of the nations, they're described as a city that becomes a heap and a ruin by the hand of God. Isaiah predicts by the Spirit of the Lord that the city will never be rebuilt. Now, this is because you to understand that things happening in the Middle East that we hear about on the news are very relevant to the Scripture. The ruins of ancient Babylon, they're known to modern-day archaeology. It's totally without dispute. 59 miles southwest of Baghdad is the ancient ruins of the city of Babylon. Saddam Hussein had been actively rebuilding these ancient ruins for many, many years, up to the time that he was deposed by U.S. forces. Now, in doing this, this brutal dictator pitted himself against the God of the universe and suffered the penalty for his rebellion. Now, you got to understand, Saddam Hussein understood exactly what he was doing, in spite of the fact that he owed a great debt to the Jewish people, just like Hitler. Did you know Hitler was half Jewish? Hitler was half Jewish. He was of Jewish extraction. His father was a wealthy Austrian, and his mother was a domestic employee on the estate of this wealthy uh, Austrian. And just like Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein's father was unknown to him. And his mother both tried to abort him and to commit suicide. The father found out that the mother was pregnant. He disappeared. And uh, the mother both tried to abort the baby. And when she couldn't successfully abort the baby, she tried to commit suicide. But the unborn baby and the desperate mother were saved, not by Islamic neighbors. The mother and the baby were saved by a compassionate family of Iraqi Jews. Jews, did you hear that? Saddam Hussein's downfall then was a fulfillment of the words of Jesus in John 10, 35, that the scripture cannot be broken. Saddam Hussein had a vision of raising up the city that was such a desperate persecutor of the people of God in ancient times, but yet it was the debt uh, to the very people he persecuted, that he was even uh, survived past the womb because loving Jewish people reached out to a desperate mother and spared her life. See, when we read of ancient Babylon that Isaiah speaks about, and we think about the fate of men such as Sodom and Hussein, we also have to realize this. Babylon is a spirit that works in the earth. Babylon is a spirit that every one of us have encountered and do encounter on a regular basis. In 1 John, we read as well that the Antichrist 
is not just an apocalyptic figure that will appear one day, but the Antichrist is a spirit. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> that has been working in the earth since the earliest days of the church. Even before, through characters such as Haman and many others. Let's read 1 John 4, verse 3. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. You hear that? Every spirit, including human spirits. He's not talking about demons. It includes the demonic, but it also includes human spirits. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist where you have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world even back in John's day. Those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as Savior are not merely friends with whom he has yet to make an acquaintance. Ephesians 2, 16 and James 4, 14 tell us that all the world and every man, woman, and child outside of Christ is born in enmity against God. We are born enemies of God in an enmity that can only be ameliorated by the shed blood of Calvary and accepting Jesus Christ as both Lord and Savior. That's the only way you come to a place that you're not an enemy of God. Too many times Christians have conceived the spirit of evangelism as holding out our hat in our hand, pleading with people to accept our humble Savior. You have to remember when dealing with those outside of Christ that their minds and their dispositions are inherently opposed to Christ because every spirit, human spirits included, that do not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh arises from the spirit of Antichrist that works in the earth to keep men from salvation. You have to understand we are not trying to win hearts and minds merely. We are warring against a principality and a power intent in destroying all mankind. Speaking centuries after the destruction of ancient Babylon, the book of Revelation speaks of Babylon as being a present spiritual principle of confusion and contamination of the godly influence of the church. Let's look at Revelations chapter 14, verse 8. There followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen that great city because she made all the nations to drink of the wrath of her fornication. And then Revelations 18, 2. And he cried, the angel cried mightily with a loud voice saying, Babylon is fallen and is fallen, has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So what is Babylon? It's not talking about the ruins of an ancient city outside 59 miles southeast of Baghdad. It is the construct of ungodly culture and society outside of Christ. Revelations 19.10 exhorts the apostles and prophets of that day to rejoice over the destruction of Babylon. This tells us that Babylon is a spirit opposed to the existence of apostles and prophets in our day. Now let me say that again. If the scripture tells the apostles and prophets to rejoice over the destruction of Babylon, that means that there will be apostles and prophets present in the end times there to rejoice because this system and this spirit has been defeated. Therefore, the, the Babylon, the mystery Babylon principle is a principle seen as a spirit of opposition that even works in the culture of the church against these two aspects and callings of the fivefold ministry. Notice it's very specific. Rejoice over her, you holy apostles and prophets. Babylon does not persecute teachers. Babylon does not persecute pastors. Babylon does not persecute evangelists. Babylon is a spirit specifically and utterly opposed to the idea that apostles and prophets still exist today. And almost to a whole, 
Every denomination that exists today, if you ask them, do apostles and prophets exist today, they will tell you no. Specifically, evangelical, full gospel, charismatic, Pentecostal organizations, ministries, and churches, if you confront them on this issue, they will say, no, we don't believe even the assemblies of God specifically states in a white paper that they do not believe in a position paper in the modern-day ministry of apostles and prophets such as it was in the first century. That tells me that Mystery Babylon has infected the headquarters of the Assemblies of God in every organization, in every church, in every denominational structure that rejects apostles and prophets is being influenced by the spirit of Antichrist and the spirit of Mystery Babylon. That may not be all that is true about them, but we can certainly say that much because they're speaking something completely contrary to the Word of God, to the plain teaching of the Word of God. It's very common for leaders and ministers to suggest that God's people do not need these ministries. I remember the lady that wrote in, she said, I introduced my pastor to your ministry, and my pastor just uh, patted me on the shoulder and said, Honey, you don't need them. If you need a prophecy, I'll give you one. That's mystery Babylon at work in that pastor. That's the spirit of Antichrist at work in that church. And the scripture says in Revelation 18.4, now you listen to what it says. I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. That means whatever Babylon is, it's something God's people are in. Come out of her, my people. How do we identify it? You identify the spirit by which it operates. It persecutes the apostles and prophets. It rejects the apostles and prophets. And if you're a part of something that rejects the apostles and prophets, it may be a sweet, loving congregation. It may be a pastor that means a lot to you, but yet you have to have the wisdom to understand and to discern lest you become deceived that if it is a ministry that functionally or openly rejects apostles and prophets in our day, it's under the influence of the spirit of Antichrist and Mystery Babylon. That's a sobering thing. That is absolutely a sobering thing, and I'm not trying to pick on your pastor. I was a pastor uh, for many, many years. For 20 years, I served as a pastor. I had oversight over uh, 500 uh, churches in, in the United States and 900 churches in the mission field uh, as an assistant general overseer of the organization I was a part of. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't be an anti-pastor because I'd have to be anti-myself because that's the ministry I've been a part of most of my life. But we have to look at these things with the fidelity uh, toward God's Word that gives us clarity and realizes what we're dealing with. Isaiah looks down through uh, time. And did I finish reading Revelation 18.4? I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you may not be partakers of her sins. It's a sin to reject the prophetic. It's a sin. I don't care how sweet the person is. Or how we say, well, they just don't have, they just haven't come to understanding. No, it's a sin. And it says if that's there, you're going to receive the plagues of Babylon. And we wonder about the confusion and the chaos that reigns in our churches sometimes. Isaiah looks down through time and not only sees the destruction of ancient Babylon, but the defeat of the spirit of Babylon himself. He sees that hour when God shall wipe away all tears from the eyes of his people. And the mountain of the Lord's house will be established above all mountains and all peoples will flow into it. In verse 9, Isaiah says that the declaration of God's people will be in that day that they have waited on the Lord and he has saved them. They have waited on the Lord, and now their hearts are filled with rejoicing, for he has delivered them. How about you? Are you waiting on the Lord? Perhaps you're surrounded by people that mock the gospel and persecute you because you're of your faith in Christ. I want to say to you, take heart. Isaiah speaks to people that haven't even gone into captivity yet. They don't even believe Babylon will ever be a threat. They don't think Babylon is a problem. They're rolling their eyes and mocking Isaiah's message, but yet he's speaking compassion. He says, you don't understand. You're going to go into captivity one day, but take heart because if you wait on the Lord, you're going to come out on the other side. Take heart. Just as the spirit of Antichrist and mystery Babylon works against the faithful, even so God himself is present by the Holy Spirit working in our defense, working in defense of the faithful to bring about highest heart's desire 
and greatest dream fulfilled in your life. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the clarity of your word. We ask God that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit is saying and to identify Mystery Babylon even at work as something that we have to come out of. To identify the spirit of Antichrist even as something that works not just out there in the world among the openly godless, but even in our own midst. And that, God, we would come to the scriptures and say, cleanse our eyes, anoint our eyes with eye salve, open our ears, and help us to be that people that postures ourselves in fidelity to what your word actually says, and not just vain, empty Christian culture. In Jesus' name, amen.